good everybody it's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode of the celebrity junk Dima I'm a piano music so September the 12th 2022 the hip-hop world was devastated with the murder of PMB rock at Roscoe's chicken and waffles in South Central Los Angeles and of course my heart goes out to him, the hip hop community, the great city of Philadelphia, and for all of the people who have lost uh, many of these artists in the celebrity hip hop world. I was sad to find out who actually was behind this orchestrated hit. First of all, to my understanding, it was a black man. Well, you know what? I actually want to play the news clip from what I heard and you and me can come back and talk about it. And we are following more breaking news here at the news desk. Mark, what have you learned? Okay, so uh, we have just gotten information from LAPD. They are looking for someone in connection with a murder from back on September 12th. If you could take my computer here, I can show you. LAPD is looking for this man. He, they say he is Freddie Lee Trone, and he is wanted in connection of, uh, with a murder that happened on Monday, September 12th at a Roscoe's in South LA. That's where Rakeem Alam, also known as PNB Rock, was murdered murdered and LAPD has finally identified the suspect in this murder. They say uh, Freddie Litrone is armed and dangerous and if you know his uh, whereabouts to call LAPD because they want him in connection with this murder. So there is our culprit, Mr. Freddie Lee Trone. Mr. Freddie Lee Trone is on the run. But what is more devastating than Mr. Trone is who the accomplice was. Hmm. Who, who, who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Because see, the accomplice was a minor. How old was the minor? The minor was 17 years old. So the father-son duo was in the restaurant's parking lot when the rapper and girlfriend arrived. The 17-year-old is believed to be the shooter. The father drove the getaway car. Now, let me, let me just talk, say, say this because it, it, it kind of made me think what kind of person would just shoot somebody in broad daylight like this, knowing that they would get caught. And now that I understand who it was, it makes sense because this is a young man that's doing this. This is a teenager. So a teenager is going to be very emotional not to even think about the consequences that would happen. Most guys that's 30 and 40 would at least have enough sense. They might rob you, but to, to, to try to think about doing that doesn't make sense. But now we're talking about a 17 year old. It makes perfect sense. And what am I getting back to? Let me tell you, Pookie and Ray Ray parenting. I'm looking at you, T.I. Now, I know T.I. definitely would never tell his son to do anything like this. I know that. OK, but I want to deal with the concept here. There are so many Pookie and Ray Ray fathers in black America that we don't talk about them, but I'm going to talk about them today. Let me tell you, everybody in black America just ain't without a father. We have a lot of bad fathers in black America. I know because I lived with some of them and bad stepfathers. The ones who encourage their sons to creep or be a blood scoop. The ones that tell their sons like Boosie, you need to go ahead on and be sleeping with these young girls at 14. Huh? Okay. The ones that try to push their sons into careers. Like, you know, he didn't make it to the NBA. So his son got to make it to the NBA. He going to live his life through his son in basketball and football. And then when you see the son, you know, the son is just an ultimate pookie. Don't go to class. Can't really read or write. See, we're not dealing with that sort of behavior that comes from pookies and Ray Ray parenting and a lot of things that you hear, and I talked about little baby buying his son a um, $100,000 watch. You want to know who is one of the biggest terrorists in Pookie and Ray Ray organizations? I'll tell you. Fathers. Dads. Okay? It's not only just, you know, guys want to always say it's single mothers. Sometimes it's bad father figures. Because I want to give a shout out to the brothers out there who have taken young men underneath them and, and did something for them. I'm one of them. I'm one of those guys when, you know, my dad wasn't always doing the right thing. Somebody in the black community came and said, that young man need to become something. We're not going to let him get involved in this and that. And I thank many men that were out there like that. No, you're going to go to school. 
I, I thank God for them. And I want, I want to give a shout out to many of you brothers out there in black America who do that every day. You are some of the reasons why a lot of young men that come from no fatherless homes are when they see somebody, they become somebody because they see you. Okay. They see what you have done. And I thank God for you black men out there every day. Cause if it wasn't for you and guys like you, it wouldn't be a guy like me today having to live and be able to give back to the communities I, I deal with. So I thank you guys for that, but I'm going to deal with those of you who do not. Because a lot of men are learning how to become men from uh, bad men from other men. And for the fact that this is your son, you put your 17 year old son to go rob a man when he's going to be spending his rest of his life in prison. And guess what, bro? You're not going to be there to protect him because when they get him in, the, in them stalls and stuff, we know what his fate's going to be because everybody can be tough with the pistol. Can they? What you going to do when Pookie and them trying to get all up in you? And you know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? I know that you do. I know you know what I'm talking about. Because see, we don't want to deal with that, do we? No, we don't. We don't want to deal with that. We don't. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with that instead of telling a young man, even if he wanted to go rob somebody, you're going to school. Let me tell you about good, good black male parenting. My granddaddy used to tell me, oh, and, my, and my father, my father wasn't always perfect. He said, listen, let me tell you something, son. Long as you live here, you going to church. You are going to church. Okay? Going to church. If you don't want to go to church, you can't stay here. Not only are you going to church, you're going to work and you're going to school. And my dad, when I was like, like 9, 10, 11, 8, he would make you sing in the choir. He would be right there. He'd be right there watching your lips move to see if you're singing or not. And if you didn't sing loud enough, he'll make you, he'll be, he'll be in the background. I remember one time he said, <laughs> oh, this is funny. He said, sing loud like you like 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 you was yelling loud in the alley when I was beating you the other night. Because I had did something here with me in the alley. He said, sing like that. I want to hear you sing like that. Speak loud like you were speaking when I was beating you in the alley. Okay? And it's a shame that you have these Pookie and Ray Ray fathers who are not requiring anything of these young black men to become something. When you need to. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Stop playing. Stop ruining these young men's lives. Please stop. It doesn't make any sense at all. And guess what? It ain't acceptable, family. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not. I got to call it out. It's not. And we got to stop being dusty and call it out too. Because you don't even deserve to be a father doing this. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity John. I already appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe, hit the bell. Check out the first comment at the top. And as you know, the buffoon remains at all time high. I'm out.